It's been two years that I've been struggling with this question. What's the most effective way to spend $20,000 in Africa? Burundi has many problems we could try to solve, like not having access to clean water, not enough food, and not good healthcare. But after consulting with the smartest people in the world, we decided to spend the money in an unconventional way. We have partnered with Emmanuel's organization and the orphanages here in Burundi, Homes of Hope, and they gave us this beautiful room that we can do whatever we want inside. Majority of the kids don't like schools around the world, so we're going to attempt to build a different kind of school. We don't want to build a school with a teacher. We want to build a self-learning environment. And now is the big deal. We have 10 computers, one for each table, and the kids will be sitting here and surfing together the internet, and they will learn. We got inspired by Sugata Mitra and the hole in the wall experiment. What this experiment did, they put a computer in a neighborhood in India, and the kids after using it for a couple of weeks, they learn how to surf online, they teach the other little kids how to ask Google questions, and slowly, slowly, they learn English with using it, and so many more things. And this experiment show that you don't need kind of a teacher. You just need to have access to the internet and to be with your friends surfing the internet, and you're going to learn a lot of things. It's very important that there is not only one person using each computer. It's important that a couple of kids are using the same time one computer so they are learning together. So what was an idea started to become a reality. With the first computers that were available, the kids started to serve the internet. And it was very interesting what they decided to search. The richest man in the world they are typing. <laughs> yes, Elon Musk. <laughs> I started seeing what we imagined yes. in real life. It's coming to reality actually. Yeah, and it's very beautiful. This is how I learned, yeah. just by surfing yeah. the internet okay. and watching other successful people and yeah. learning from yeah. them. And I think they are going to do the same. The spirit of self-learning. Yes, self-learning and education. We don't want teachers. No, <laughs> we are at least at 70% of project implementation. Yes, So Good. tonight it will be done. Good. You guys, wait. You guys, wait. <laughs> but before you see the final result, I need to explain you how this project will be sustainable for many years to come. Why solar panels are important? Solar panels are important because they give access to electricity, which is the foundation of development. And here in Burundi, it's not very common to have uh, electricity, right? Yes. Out of 6,000 primary schools in Burundi, only around 25% have access to electricity. So I'm here with my friend Ivan on the roof. You see they are building this how much you think the solar panels costed high price high price yeah. all these solar panels with their batteries downstairs costed seven thousand dollars so we spent almost half of the budget for these oh. solar panels yeah. what do you want to say in the camera before we go down the problem of electricity is done yes that's true the problem of the electricity is done yeah. let's go down to see what we built inside so this is the batteries that the solar panels are storing the electricity right exactly with this batteries guys the thing that we're going to do here will be able to function 24 7 and for many years without any cost the next big part of the project where we spent four thousand dollars was to bring an optic cable from two kilometers away so the room could have internet by the way guys all this stuff was not done by us he thought all the details his organization yeah, we I love computers see. of schools of burundi okay yeah, that's the five Fiber optic cable that we are using for connectivity up there. He's holding it now. So this way is the only way we can get in rural areas. Uh, actually, where we are working actually for that orphanage site, there is no other way to get connection instead of using this way of a fiber optic connection. A better way because it's a good internet and the speed is good with a high brand there. Thank you. <laughs> Better YouTuber than me. <laughs> so after testing the first laptops and a lot of hours to finish setting up the rest of the computers, it's time to see how the room ended up looking. It's ready! <laughs> so it's been two years in the making and just seeing this come to life is beautiful. What are you watching on? Nico Build. <laughs> well, 
They will learn whatever they want to learn. This is the beauty of self-learning. There is not one curriculum for everyone. You can learn whatever you want online. I'm against the regular education, what can I say? You might see us messing around and all this stuff, but this is very official. And so tomorrow a lot of politicians and important people of this country will come here to visit and do the opening ceremony. So let's cut to tomorrow. <laughs> The open ceremony, guys. Yeah. We are going to open. Okay. Yeah. It's officially open. <laughs> well, I know how it is. Now other people will see it. <laughs> Many politicians came to see the project, and we celebrated the opening with a big ceremony. Before two years, we made a GoFundMe and you guys donated $10,000 and I matched the donation another $10,000 so this is made because of you mostly so all these kids enjoying and having fun in the internet and many more in the future is because of you and I want to say a big thank you for trusting me and donating your money and making this change with us the rest of the money was spent on renovating the room and buying the furniture for around $3,000. And we left $3,000 on the side for maintenance needs for the next years. And finally, I don't want to end the video without some words from my conversation with Sugada Mitra, our biggest inspiration for this project. How can you learn without a teacher? No, you can learn by yourself. Groups of children interacting with each other and given access to the internet are able to learn things by themselves. I called it self-organized learning. I began to find that knowing is no longer very important. Whenever you have a question, you Google it. It's just that we don't accept it as education. But I realize now by looking at children that there is no difference. It doesn't matter whether you knew it from before or you just found out.